So the term gaslighting, it actually, we've, we've come to know it, the psychological, hi guys, thanks for jumping on. The, the psychological definition of to gaslight someone is to manipulate someone to the point where they actually doubt their own sanity. So it can be subtle, um, so that it happens slowly over time, so that they very slowly get sucked into this and before they know it they're caught up in confusion and total doubt or it can be very very vicious and blatant but the uh the accepted the accepted definition of it is that it's to man to emotionally manipulate to the point where someone doubts their sanity and where it comes from is um i think it was back in the 1950s i forget the date now but there was a play and it was called Attic Lights. Um, and at the time, the, gas, the Attic Lights were obviously running on gas. And what happened in this play, there was a man who had, um, he was trying to convince his wife that she was crazy and to convince other people that she was crazy. And he had a tactic whereby he had set up this whole elaborate system. And this, this is the thing with gaslighting. It's, it's done on purpose. People, it's not that people do it on accident. People know what they're doing. So he set up this whole system where from the attic where she didn't know where he was, he could dim the lights in the house. And obviously she, she realized that the lights were dimming. And then when he came back, she would tell him the lights dimmed again, you know, and he would deny it. He, he would tell her it absolutely cannot have happened, didn't happen, and start to tell her that she was going crazy and start to tell other people that she was going crazy. And this is where we get the modern term gaslighting from. So you can see exactly what he was doing. So why do people do it? Um, it's a particularly nasty form of control, uh, which is why it is used by um, particularly vicious um, emotional abusers, and in particular, narcissists. I said right at the beginning, favorite ploy of narcissists to, well, for lots of reasons, um, because they don't want to take responsibility for anything themselves. Um, they, are, they are just nasty in the way that they try to undermine and demean you. And this particular tactic means that you think you are responsible. You kind of, you get sucked in. They do things in such a way that you question reality. Uh, you, you question what really happened. And then they can blame you, make it out to be your fault. And you get so confused in what really happened, what they said, what their motive was, that you just literally, you end up, I've been in this situation myself, where you end up saying, am I going insane here? Is there something seriously wrong with me? And this is exactly what they want to do. This is the effect they want. Um, so that you, you lose all credibility. Because if you don't have credibility with yourself, how can you have credibility with other people? And this is how they then can get other people on board and tell other people lies about you, get other people believing things, and also get you believing that other people are saying and doing things about you too. That's another favorite tactic with the gaslighting. So let's have a look. So how does this show up? So um, you have to remember this can happen in any relationship. This doesn't just have to be your intimate relationship or your spouse or partner. This can happen with your friends. Not that they'd be very nice friends, but you can get caught up in this. Um, they can be friends. They can be work colleagues, managers, um, you know, people who are maybe in charge of social situations. Um, they can be parents and children. So children can gaslight as well. You know, once people get it to teenage years, I think children probably don't do it so much because you have to be quite clever about how you do it. But certainly teenagers are very capable of gaslighting and into early 20s can gaslight their parents very easily. Um, into thinking that things are not as they were. So one of the things they will do, um, some, as this is, some of it is subtle, 
Some of it is uh, very blatant. And one of the things they will do is blatantly lie. So they will tell an outright barefaced lie that you know is a lie. And they know that you know. All right. And you might challenge them on it. And they will tell you that you are crazy. And all the while they know that you know. But there is nothing you can do. You are faced with someone who is telling you, like most of us can't do this. Like most of us, when we just get caught out in slight dishonesty or a small fear or something, we just crumble. But these people, they don't care. They will come up with something that is a complete lie. And even when they are challenged, they will stick with what they have said. And you're thinking, what can I do with that? You know, so that's one of their tactics. And so I've written these down so I don't forget. So, um, yeah, and the other, so when I'm talking about these blatant lies, so even then, I'm sure, I don't know if you know, I mean, I come across this a lot because of the kind of groups that I'm in. Um, but even when they are faced with proof, they will deny it. And this is how we end up with people saying something like, uh, my husband was away. And I have a feeling he's cheating because I found a restaurant bill for two people. It clearly has two people on it. It says it's for two covers. There are two mains, two this, two that. But I asked him about it and he said no. He says he was on his own. Proof. And you've got the poor woman in some group trying to get support saying, ladies, what do I do? What would you do? What would you think? But what, what can she do? She's challenged him. She's got the proof. And he's still telling the lie. And you see, this is how brazen gaslighting is. She's, she's doubting herself. She's in a group saying, what, am I wrong? Could I be wrong? Could it be something else? She knows the answer. She knows what it was. But yet she needs other people to support her, to validate that she is not going absolutely crazy. And this is what gaslighting does. The other thing that gaslighters will do is they will attack you. They will emotionally attack you. And it can be um, that they make e either very obvious remarks that are extremely nasty, hurting, hurtful and cutting, or they will be very subtle, very subtle so that when you are hurt and you question it, they turn it around. They tell you that you're being oversensitive. They tell you that you worry too much about that stuff. You took it the wrong way, you know, and in your head, you know what they said. You know what they meant. You know what their motive was, because what else could it have been? And yet here they are saying, no, you got it wrong. This isn't their fault. This isn't their problem. This isn't their character flaw. This is yours. So they're the ones that have done the wrong. They've been really nasty, undermined you, um, again, you know, just cut into your self-confidence and self-esteem again. But when you present that to them, there's a reason it's your fault. OK, and this is a big thing where they will attack you and then blame you. They will never, ever take responsibility. Um, exactly the same as a narcissist. I'll get to this at the end. But with a gaslighter, don't try and win. I'll show you how you can win. You can win for yourself but you can't win in the argument. It just, it just won't happen. And I'll, I'll talk you through that, what that looks like. And one of the extreme examples we see of this is unfortunately in child sex abuse, where you've got a child. And the thing we find doing the therapy with people as adults is that the thing they're really, really struggling with is that they feel guilty. They feel it was their fault because that's what they were told. Now, can you imagine anything more obscene? A child who is told by an adult, oh, this was your fault. You made me do this. You're too pretty. You're too attractive. Um, you, you, you know, you attracted me to you. You wanted this. I thought you wanted this. 
as an adult, that's difficult to deal with. A, a child has nowhere to go with that. A child will just take that on and think, yes, it must be my fault. This must be happening to me because I'm bad. I did this. This is my fault. And this is one of the most obscene, upsetting examples of gaslighting um, that I come across very, very regularly. This I, I always find this so distressing uh, where you hear about people who as small children thought that they were to blame because of course they're telling me this as adults and they still think they're to blame. That's their thought pattern, their blueprint. It's what was what was told to them by these awful abusers um, gaslighting in this way. It's absolutely awful. Now, the other thing that they will do, they will flick between bringing you down um, and so that, so that you're, you're weakened, you're disarmed, you're questioning yourself, your self-worth, your sanity. It's very easy for them to do to get you to question your sanity with these methods. And then when they sense that maybe they're pushing you too far and you kind of reached breaking point, they will switch. And it like maybe love bomb you, gift bomb you. Suddenly you're the best thing. And absolute confusion the only reason they are doing this they are not doing this to build you up do not get mistaken don't think oh they've changed what they think about me or they must have changed their mind the only reason they are doing this is to confuse you okay so they're going to suddenly switch from all of the negative input to sudden positive input and what's going to happen you are suddenly so confused you don't know what's what. And now when you try and tell them, oh, why are you doing this now? Because you used to say X, what are they going to do? They're going to deny it. Of course I didn't say that because I say this about you. This is what I say. This is what I tell people. And this can also be very, very difficult where in private, what they tell you is one thing um, so maybe they're nasty, bringing you down, saying all this negative, they're criticizing, um, just making you feel awful all the time. And then when you are out, they appear to be another way. So they are another way to other people. They will say different things to people about you. They will behave differently. So when you then try and tell people what's happening or how you feel or question what's being done or said, the other people are confused. They're confused because they're seeing a completely different side. Thank you. They, they, who do they believe? Like, you know, they don't know what reality is. They, they don't know who to believe. And it's very difficult then for the person who is being emotionally abused and having the gaslighting done to them to get people outside to understand because then they look at this person, the person who's doing the abusing, and they say, no, surely not. No, 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 he adores you. No, what he says about you is, and then the very people that you're trying to get support from, thank you, are suddenly questioning you, and they're looking at you thinking, is she going insane? What on earth is wrong with her? And this is one of the huge problems with emotional abuse, that, you know, you can't show bruises. Oh, they're all emotional. They're very deep, and they hurt a lot, but no one else can see them. You know what's going on, but other people think something else is going on. And it's very difficult for you to get the kind of support that you need, um, unless you've got really, really good friends that you can really just say, hey, this is what's happening. I need you to help me. I need you to believe me. And I need you to stand by me. And this person is not who they seem to be. If you can do that, that's great. So we've talked about the confusion. Right, okay, the other thing that they will do, I talked about how they will align other people. Um, the other thing that they will do is um, they will project their own behavior onto you. So the, again, very aligned to narcissism where someone, let's say someone is accusing you of hoarding money or of lying or of being somewhere that you 
said you weren't or whatever. And you're thinking, this is crazy. This absolutely did not happen. And you kind of say to them, no, you're the one that was there. No, you're the one that did that. And they will keep insisting that it was you. And what they're doing, um, they're just trying to twist your whole perception and your sense of reality. And you find this especially if someone is being unfaithful or having an affair or maybe they're out drinking when they say they're not. They will accuse you of those things. And all they are doing is deflecting. They're deflecting what they know they are doing wrong and accusing you and making all of this your fault. That's that's their intention with all of this, for you to feel in the wrong, completely confused, like you're going insane and that you must be in the wrong. This must be somehow, this must be your fault. Even if you're looking at it going, this can't be my fault. He's the one that was lying. He's the one that was doing this. But somehow it's being made your fault. And it's really good to recognize these gaslighting techniques. Now, so what can you do about it? Okay, let me let me tell you something you can do. What you can't do, it's the same as with a narcissist. You cannot engage and hope to win. You cannot win a face-to-face battle. But what you can do is win for yourself. And I'll tell you how. So if you think that all of this is designed to make you think that you are going crazy, that you got this completely wrong, okay? So as I say, to win for yourself would be to prove to yourself that you are not crazy and that they are doing these things, okay? So the best thing to do, the best thing is to write things down. Now, what I mean is, let's say you have a conversation with something and you reach an agreement. Write down, especially if it's a big thing and you're thinking this is going to come up again. All right, you'll get to know what these things are. And I'll tell you that I've I've done this myself. You get to know and you're kind of thinking, oh God, this is going to come back in a couple of weeks time and it's all going to be different and it's all going to be my fault. So write it down for yourself. And then in a couple of weeks time, when this does come up or whenever it comes up, there's two things you can do. You can either know that you wrote this down. And when you are questioning your sanity, because you are being told something different to what you know happened, for yourself, now for yourself, you can go and check. Go and check what you wrote down just for yourself so that you can say, okay, all right, I'm being gaslighted here. I know what happened because I wrote it down. It's here. I wrote it down. It's in black and white. You can do it for yourself. If you are feeling brave and if you are physically safe and only if you are physically safe because someone could lose it when you do this, What you can do, if you are very strong and secure in yourself and you are feeling brave, you can say to the other person, and let me tell you, this is what I did. You can say, hang on a minute. I knew that this would come up and that you would do this. So I wrote this down. Now, this is a person who absolutely wants control. They are trying to confuse you. You're not confused. You wrote it down. You knew that this would happen. So you've got the control now. They don't know what to do. They are not going to like this. They're not going to respond well. So, and they're probably going to like, again, try and make this your fault. Why did you write it down? I suppose you wrote it down just so that you could blame someone else. So you've got to be really strong if you're going to do this. And what you can say is, no, 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 this isn't about blaming. I'm not blaming anyone. There's nothing to blame anyone for. I just wrote it down so I know what really happened and leave it at that. That is the biggest win you are going to get, but it's for yourself. Do you see? So for myself in that situation, it was fantastic to be able to just say that and say, no, no, it wasn't about blame, not at all. I just, I was getting worried 
that I was getting confused so often about things that I wanted to know for myself that I'm not going insane. So again, I kind of took it on myself. But I'm kind of saying as well, I see what you're doing here. I, I guessed what you would do. So I've protected myself. And I just went to what I'd written down. Now, I was careful in what I wrote down as well, because I wrote down everything, all the bits of this compromise or not compromise, and all the bits where I didn't behave so well either. I didn't make myself out to be some angel in all of this. So that when I then went back to look at it, if the other person wanted to see it, they would see that I had I had done this um, as it really was, you know, and they could try and deny it. But then I'd be like, well, you know, I, I, I put down the part that I played too. You know, I've been real and honest in this. I didn't, I didn't have to do this. I wanted to record it as it was. Now, what happened in my case was the gaslighting stopped. There and then it stopped. And actually, the couple of times that it tried, someone tried to do it since, I just jumped on it straight away. I got very brave from the writing down and from winning, from winning that. So whenever it looked as if it was going to happen, I just kind of said, oh, I can see you're gaslighting me again. Don't try and gaslight me. I know what you're doing. But I would not suggest that most of you do that. Don't forget, I've been working in therapy for a long time. And I kind of know how to manage a situation like that. I know what to say. I know how to backfoot someone. Most of you aren't going to be able to do that. So that's why I, if you can do it, great. If you can, fantastic. But for most of you, get a win for yourselves where you know what was written down, okay? You you know what was done, and you can then breathe a sigh of relief and go, Phew, okay, I'm not going crazy. I did have it right. This person is gaslighting me. And then you'll be more aware as well. You know, once you've done that once, you'll be more aware. And as you become aware and as you make more notes and you see the patterns and you see what's happening, maybe at some point you will be brave enough to challenge it, okay? But the thing you can definitely do is, is look at your relationship with that person, what, whether it's a work relationship, whether you're friends, whether it's an intimate relationship, and you can start to say, do I want to be in a relationship with this person that is gaslighting me? You know, why are they doing this? This isn't good for me. This isn't healthy. This isn't how I want someone in my life to be behaving. And this is how you get a win for yourself from the gaslighting. And that's pretty much the best that you, you can do. Same with a narcissist. You're, you're not going to win. Um, I think that what I managed to do um, was extremely rare and probably comes from all the experience I have in being able to do that. And hey, yeah, if I can help any of you do that, if you have any questions, if you would like to do that for yourselves and you need some guidance on that, I'm really happy to help you. I know how destructive gaslighting is. And if I can help any of you to get a win for yourselves where you're being undermined by gaslighting, um, yeah, be more than happy to do that.